Good evening, and thank you for uh, coming and joining us for our first webinar of 2020 or for our 2020 season. Um, a little bit about the webinar tonight. I'm going to give an overview about SPI programs, and then I'll take questions afterwards. There's a live chat that you can uh, write your questions, and like I said, I will address them all after I go over some of the program specifics. A lot of times, the overview will answer a lot of the questions you have. Um, but anyways, let's start with a little bit of history about SPI and the company itself. Um, founded in 96 by a Spanish teacher who really felt her students needed to live the language in the summer in order to attain any kind of fluency. And so she started our flagship program in Santander, which we still run today, still an excellent program, and uh, really found a lot of success with students gaining uh, a lot of language knowledge and building their foundation for fluency. So obviously, since then, we have expanded the company to a number of other locations, including San Sebastian, Spain, Biarritz, France, Siena, Italy, and two locations in Costa Rica, Monte Verde in the Cloud Rainforest and Playa Flamingo on the coast. Uh, we choose these, these locations because they're ideal for immersion. Uh, they really just uh, have everything that we would want for our students to experience, including small, manageable, authentic, uh, easy to navigate. And so we continue to run all of these programs in these locations because they continue to fit that mold. Uh, we as a company only facilitate language immersion for high school students. A very specific age group, a very specific uh, mission and goal. Uh, and so everything that we set up for the programs has this age in mind and this goal, this mission. Um, and, and it's a specific age group, too young to do certain things, too old to do others. Uh, and we create a balanced program in these locations because we want the students to feel like they are living and breathing that particular culture. Again, why we why we have these programs in these smaller locations, uh, and we don't do things like um, educational tours or uh, having a glorified vacation in Europe. These are really meant to be language immersion, immersing the kids into the culture and the language of that specific country. Uh, so we founded our programs on a couple main components that would include our housing accommodations, our academics, the um, activities and excursions, the free time, of course, and the safety and supervision. So beginning with the housing accommodations, we house all of our students in uh, homes of local families. Uh, and this is a big question for our prospective families. Who who are these people my kid is going to live with? Or who, who am I going to live with? And what I can tell you is because we've been running programs for so long in these locations, most of our families were, have worked with us for five plus years. But really, regardless of how long they've with us, you know, two years or a decade, they go through an annual vetting process, which includes a thorough background check, interview inspection in and outside of the home. Uh, during operations, we have director on-site check-ins. And then at the end of each summer, we take our student feedback. We want to make sure that they continue to be a good fit for our program and meet SPI standards. And what I mean by that is that they are, first and foremost, providing a clean, safe, safe space to, to live for the students. Uh, secondly, that they are working in tandem with our directors to oversee the well-being of the students. Um, of course, some of the basics, you know, three meals a day, uh, laundry service once a week. And also a really important part of this is that they are providing cultural engagement. Um, the reason that we have students live in homestays is because it gives them an insight into that particular culture that they wouldn't otherwise get if they lived in student residence or student dorm. Um, so this really gives them an opportunity to see and feel what it would be like to live in Spain or in Italy. It also provides an opportunity for them to have natural conversations with native speakers. So important. Uh, really just continuing their education for the language even when they're at home. Um, so it can be a, a challenging part of the program for some students in that it's the first time that a lot of these students have studied abroad. It's the first time they've lived with the family that they haven't known for much of their life. 
So, um, you know, it can be challenging in the beginning, but in the end, it always is so rewarding because most of our students leave with a deep relationship with their homestay, a relationship that they continue uh, to have post-program and keep in touch with and contact with summers moving forward when they want to visit. They know somebody in that city. So it's a really neat takeaway. All of our students do live with one to two other SPI students from the program. Some students will live with a friend or, or travel with a friend, and if they'd like to travel with a friend, they can certainly live together. Uh, all we require is that they request each other in their enrollment form, um, and as long as that request is reciprocal, we'll guarantee placement in the home together. Um, but the majority of our students are independent travelers. So they travel without a friend or without a known roommate. And so we match roommates based on age, gender, language level, personal interests. We look at food allergies. We look at medical requirements um, to make the best match that we can uh, it, for roommates. We also work with that criteria to place them with an appropriate homestay, um, looking at all of that information to make sure that our homestays are an appropriate fit for our kids, um, a super important part of the program. All of the homestays are within walking distance to school, and city center, um, and again, a very important part of language immersion is living with a local family. Um, moving on to the academics, so our students do take courses Monday through Friday, and with regard to schedule. Students in Europe will take classes in the morning and our students in Costa Rica take classes in the afternoon. And that's because of the rain schedule. We want to make sure that our Costa Rica kids are able to get in all the fun activities and volunteer experience before the rain sets in. And then when the rain does set in, they'll be inside doing their classes. Class is obviously a super important part of this program. Um, it is really the framework for the rest of the program. Uh, students take a placement exam on their first day of class to make sure that they are in an appropriate level for their particular level. We want to make sure every kid feels like they are being challenged, but not overwhelmed, not underwhelmed. And so they're in small classes, uh, five to eight students, and they're a little bit different than our classes in the United States in that uh, they are not facilitated by lecture or focused on textbook and workbook. It's really an interactive style of, of learning um, based in conversation. So learning the language by using the language. Um, again, setting up uh, the foundation for the rest of the program, what they're learning in class and also getting over that hesitation to speak. They're then taking into the other aspects of the program, whether that be at home with their homestay or with directors and peers on an activity, um, but important part for them to start to get comfortable speaking with like level peers and direct, uh, excuse me, and teachers in small settings, a small environment, um, and, and it really prepares them for every other aspect of the program, um, which brings me to the activities and excursions. I mean, this is really the fun part of learning. It serves as a secondary curriculum in that uh, everything that we schedule is going to be be facilitated in that target language. So whether it's an athletic activity or a cultural activity, they're learning language in a fun way. So something that they're interested in and we're running it in Spanish or Italian, or French. Um, so a really neat way to continue to learn the language. We are not broken up into small groups for this. This is for the entire group to participate in together. And they're selected, all the activities are selected based on what's locally and seasonally popular. Um, and so there, that means they're gonna range anywhere from athletic activities like surfing, sailing, rafting, zip lining, to cultural activities like cooking and dance. We visit local cultural landmarks that are significant to the culture in that particular city. Uh, we take short excursions to neighboring villages uh, to really see other cities that are in the same part of the country, the same culture that they're in. And it really gives the kids a very um, well-balanced view of where they're living and learning. Um, and again, serving as a secondary curriculum, a very important part of our programs, uh, learning, you know, continuing to build their ear for the language, but in a really fun way, um, which brings me to the free time, which is always a big question for parents and for students. How much free time is it supervised? What, how does that factor into the program? 
And we find that free time is actually a really important part of the programs because we want the kids to feel like they're living there. Um, and because it's modeled after a college study abroad, it's an important part of um, the experience. And so free time really happens in between class and activity. It also happens on Sundays and in the evenings. So um, they have an opportunity to explore the local shops, local restaurants, uh, go to the beach if they want, spend time with friends. A lot of them will spend the day with their homestay and get additional exposure to that city and culture. Uh, so it's an important part of the program. Is it supervised? Not necessarily in that they're not going to be accompanied by their director, but they, we do operate on the buddy system. So all students have to be with other SPI students for the duration of the program. So whether that be they're going to the beach or they're shopping for the afternoon, um, they have to be with other SPI students. And that being said, our directors are in town, um, often crossing paths with all of the students because again, these are small locations. Uh, but it is an important part of the learning process. And, and not only is it giving them exposure to local culture, it also is building um, you know, this transformational uh, opportunity, a personal transformation. Um, a lot of maturity is built, college preparation, being able to be responsible and be on their own. It's an important part of our programs we find. And then lastly, and again, a very big question for prospective SPI families is the safety and supervision. And I covered a little bit about why we choose the locations that we do. They're small, manageable, they're regarded as very safe. So low crime rates, excellent medical facilities, um, a really appropriate place to have this age student study abroad. With regard to supervision, who's overseeing the kids? Um, and that's really threefold. The homestays, as I mentioned, are with the kids while they're at the home. Uh, our school coordinators who oversee the kids in class. And then finally, and most importantly, our SPI directors. These are the folks that oversee the entirety of the program. They're a mix of US-based uh, language teachers with advanced degrees in the language, and then native speakers who are from that particular city. Our native speakers obviously bring a certain authenticity to the program. They serve as our local guide on a lot of the activities. They help build you know, uh, current and up-to-date uh, itineraries for us. And um, they have an opportunity, again, to have natural conversations with a native speaker from that town. Our US-based language teachers, these are our lead directors. These are the international moms and dads who are in touch with our families prior to them ever going abroad. So you'll get to know your director prior to leaving for your program uh, and ask questions and get to know them. But they run all of the activities, they do the face-to-face check-ins, they oversee the entirety of the program and the well-being of students. The ratio of director to student is one to eight, so it's a nice low ratio. Um, and again, we keep our programs very small, so generally it's three to four directors, depending on the size of the group. Um, and it's really what's Set S, sets SPI apart out of all the other reasons that I have already explained, but highly educated folks who are veteran directors who really know how to not only handle uh, high school students, but also how to give a successful language learning experience. So those are the components of SPI programs. The schedule of the program, and again, it's flip-flopped in Costa Rica, but in general, um, in our European program, students will wake up, have breakfast at their homestay, they then go to class in the morning, and again, Costa Rica, it's activity. Uh, and then they'll have a little free time between class and activity, or, or vice versa. And then we have an activity or excursion in the afternoon, and depending on what that is, will depend on how long we, how, how much time we devote to that. Um, and post-activity, we go home for dinner with our homestay. Students do have a little free time in the evening, and we enforce curfew that is relative to sundown. So in Europe, uh, the curfew is 11 o'clock during the weekdays and 12 o'clock during the weekends. In Costa Rica, the, the curfew is 9 o'clock during the weekdays and 9.30 during the weekends. And that's overseen in tandem uh, between our homestay and, and directors. Um, and then Saturdays are full day excursions where we as a group go on private transportation to another city for the entire day because we're an immersion program. We don't do hotel stays. Uh, we come back to the program site so that we can maximize our time in town, maximize our time with our homestay because a lot of students are on short programs, two week programs, which are high impact. But we want to, again, utilize all the time we can in the city that we are studying in.
Uh, so that's sort of an overview. Oh, and Sundays, of course. Sundays are what we call rest days, and we want kids to do just that. We want them to be able to have a break from the, the structure of the program, sleep in, spend the day with their homestay, do something that the structure and schedule of the program just didn't allow the time for. So these are great days for them to explore the restaurants and shops, to go to the beach with friends, to um, go to a family party with their homestay. And they're going to have these opportunities. And then really rest up for, you know, what's coming the next week, the entire full schedule. So anyhow, that, that's a general overview of SPI programs, our main components, our history. Um, but please, any questions you have, please ask now, and I'm happy to address those. So a couple questions I always get are about, number one, cost. Cost is, it varies by location and length of stay. And you can find all of the dates and the tuition costs on our website under the programs tab. There will be a programs and date or tuition and dates. Uh, and you click there, it's gonna give you all the locations, all the sessions we offer, and it's gonna show the tuition. Uh, right now, we are offering $400 off of full tuition. Our enrollment deadline is December 15th, so this Sunday. And after that date, the tuition will rise. So if you finalized your plans, important to sign up um, as soon as you do that, and we can get, get you ready and excited for a fun summer. Okay, another question about flights. Flights are independent of tuition. You can book whatever flight you like. We have flight booking guidelines also found on our website under the overview tab. Um, and we suggest certain airlines because it mostly makes the most streamlined, easy, seamless travel experience for our kids. But again, if you want to use points or something else, you're welcome to do that. Just know that it can be a little bit more tricky uh, in terms of changing airlines or terminals. We do have uh, arrival and departure windows, and those are a little bit more strict. We want you to arrive and depart within those windows so that we can make sure we're getting there and you're arriving with the other kids. Uh, we then pick you up um, at that airport. So for Spain and France, you'll fly all the way to the program location. And for, sorry, for Italy and Costa Rica, you'll fly to uh, Liberia for Costa Rica and Rome for Italy. We meet kids immediately outside of security. We monitor their flights. We have their face photo. We send t-shirts so that we're easily recognized and so are the kids. Any other questions? All right, well, this has been really fun. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, if you have adi additional questions or questions specific to your child or the program that you're interested in, you can reach me at my direct line, which is 512-985-7848, or you can reach me at admissions at SPI Study Abroad. My name is Megan. I'm the admissions director here at SPI and really handle families from pre-enrollment through post-program. So I um, can answer just about any of your questions, but please get in touch. Um, we hope to see your application soon and have a great evening. Good night.